Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. Today I am a part of the all to new July 2023 release video hop. So I have a bunch of inspiration to share with you today. There are a lot of products in this release and this video is going to be focusing on the better press plates that all to new has come out with using the better press system from spellbinders. Now I've already done one video using the better press letter press system from Spellbinders using their plates and their inks. And I got a lot of questions about using other inks. So in today's video, I'm going to focus on using the brand new inks from Altenew. So here is a look at the two new sets. This one is Dainty Floral Garden. And then we have, I think it's called Floral Engravings. I'm going to use both of these today in my projects and I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog. Now I will be using these plates from all to new, but I am going to be using the uh, paper from Spellbinder. So this is a specialty cardstock. So I'm going to start out with the floral engravings plate. Now this one is pretty much kind of a corner piece and I personally like to ink blend my cardstock first before doing any of the letter press. So I'm going to use this new pool ink and I'm going to ink blend in just one corner. So I'm using my large flat blending brush. I'm going to pick up some of that pool ink and I'm going to start in the bottom corner. Now I was eyeballing before about where I would have the design. So I knew what corner to start ink blending and I'm going to start it so it's darkest in the corner and it's going to fade off as it gets towards the center of the cardstock, which is one of my favorite techniques. Now I'm going to bring in my plantain and I'm going to place my uh, plate down on there. You can see we have some alignment guides on there, which is the A2, which is the size of my cardstock. So I'm placing that down in the corner that I want this to go, which is that bottom corner. And you can see I bring in my cardstock and I double check my corners a lot to make sure that that is going to transfer in the correct corner. And then once I have that face down, I'm rolling up some of the best ever craft tape and I'm going to place that on the back of my cardstock. I'm sorry, that was the chase. Now this is the plantain. So I'm bringing in the plantain, which is the clear plate. I get the terms confused all of the time. But what I did is I lined up the magnets on the top corner and the bottom corners, and I pushed down so that that clear plate is going to pick up my paper because I have that tape rolled up. Now I'm bringing in that same pool ink, and I'm going to kind of dab that on there, just a little bit of a pounce, pretty much, I guess you could say. And I'm going to cover that entire plate with that pool ink. Once I have that nice and inked up, I'm bringing in that clear plate, letting the magnets catch so it attaches. And then I'm going to run this through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. Now you don't need to force it, you just let it go. And it's going to push that clear plate down into your better press plate. Now I purposely showed how I take that off of the plant, uh, platinum six because I don't want to push that clear plate down. It's kind of springy. So you don't want to push that down. You just want to gently remove it. Now I was super impressed when I pulled this off. This had an amazing transfer of ink. I'm going to bring it in a little closer so you can see it caught all of that detail and there's no splotchiness whatsoever. So I was super impressed using the Altenew inks to do my transferring. So now I'm going to take that. I don't know why I didn't just flip my cardstock, but I had cleaned my plate thinking I was going to do something else, came back in and I put that in the opposite corner. So I am going to this time just press this into the plate. I'm not, or press this into the cardstock. I am not going to ink it up. I'm just going to let it pretty much be like a dry embossing, I guess you could say. So I ran that through and now I have that design up in the corner. So all it really does is add some texture to that top corner. I didn't want to add any ink at this point. I really like how this came out and that beautiful pool color. Now, another question I had gotten in my last video was, could we use other cardstock? So here I'm bringing in Hammer Mill, which is one of my go-to cardstocks for ink blending and also for hot foiling. And I am just taking some coral red ink and I'm going around all of the outer edges. Then I still have that design or that plate 
on my chase and I'm lining up my cardstock. Once again, I'm going to just roll up some of that best ever craft tape. I'm actually just reusing what I already have, letting the magnets connect, and then picking that uh, cardstock up with by just pushing down on the plate. Now this time, I'm going to use that same color of ink that I ink blended with. This is that coral red. Once again, just kind of twisting and pushing down at the same time to make sure I have that fully covered with the ink. Then I can place that plate on top. I went off screen and ran that through my Platinum 6, and I had a beautiful transfer of ink once again. So here, this time, I'm inking it up, and I am just going to turn my plate. So I'm going to have a design in each corner. I just always kind of double check, make sure that I'm placing that on the right way in that empty space. So once again, I'm going to run that through my Platinum 6. I'm going to remove that clear plate. And here, once again, I have that beautiful transfer of ink. Now, I'm touching it here. And even though we had a beautiful transfer of ink, what I did notice, because remember, this is the hammer mill cardstock, which is a lighter weight, it does not have that letterpress feel. It transferred, it gave me a great design, but I'm not getting that beautiful kind of a debossed feeling that I get with the Spellbinders cardstock, which is a heavier weight and more textured. Now I'm going to do another card panel. This is once again using the Spellbinders cardstock and I'm using the Dainty Floral Garden. Now this is one of the, the plates out of the Dainty Floral Garden. This time I decided to actually tape my cardstock down, which is another way that you can adhere your cardstock to your clear plate. Now I did not add any ink to this. I am just straight running it through my Platinum 6. And once I pull this up, all it's doing is embedding that design or debossing that design into the paper. So here, once again, I flipped my cardstock, ran it through again, so I have that design in each corner. So this is just a very, very elegant look. I think this is great for something like anniversary cards, wedding cards, things like that. It has all that beautiful texture and detail in there. Now, I really loved that design, so I'm going to do another card front using that same design, that dainty floral garden. This time I'm going to start out by ink blending a panel of cardstock. Now this is that paper from Spellbinders and I started out with coral red at the top and then I'm coming in, oh, I think this was Sunray. I'll have it linked down below, but it's, it's just one of the new yellows. It's a beautiful yellow color. One thing to keep in mind is blending can be a little tricky on this cardstock because it is very thick, very textured. Um, it's not super smooth. And when it comes to ink blending, you want super smooth cardstock to get the best results and the easiest way to blend your colors. This still works out, but I had to work it a little bit going between my brushes and my color. So I'm taking that design. I placed it in the center of that alignment area on my uh, chase, I believe it was called. And I was kind of eyeballing about where it would be on my cardstock. Now, once again, I placed that cardstock so it was face down. So my inky part was face down, rolled up that tape so that I can push down to pick up the uh, paper. And then I'm going to come in and ink this up. Now, I, I wasn't real happy with some of the results, mainly just because of the colors I chose, but I'm still going to show it to you. So I used that same yellow and that same red. I did the yellow towards the bottom and I did the red inking towards the top. So... <laughs> I did want to come in and wipe up any excess ink. You're going to see why I should be doing this more often, but I wiped off that excess ink, placed my plate down, ran this through my Platinum 6 machine, and then when I pull this up, I didn't really see that yellow very well. It was really hard to see. So I decided to come in with a Snapdragon, which is kind of a yellowish orange. It's a beautiful color. So I just did that towards the bottom half of the plate, ran that through my machine, and when it came out, I it was okay. It, it wasn't bad, but I wanted it to stand out just a little bit more. So since everything is still in the same place, I'm going to ink that up with a jet black ink. So now it's really going to pop off of that color background. So because everything is taped down, I didn't move anything. It's a magnetic surface on the chase. Nothing has moved. I can just keep 
adding ink and redoing that until I get the results that I'm really happy with. So here I have that done. I think my I did have some transfer of black ink. I was pretty bummed about that, but I'll show you how I fix that in a moment. Um, here, I'm just using the archival ink cleaner to clean off my plate. It wasn't archival ink that I used, but I, that's just what Spellbinders recommends, and that's what I'm going to use for right now. So here we still have a beautiful impression of that design with that colored background, and I'm going to end up trimming that panel down because I had that inky spot on there. Now, back to my card that has that pool ink on it. There are some small sentiments that I lined up using those grid lines on the magnetic surface, which is amazing for lining up sentiments. I can get them straight. They don't move. And I can place this so that I can transfer the ink onto there. Now, it's going to overlap, obviously, on the design I already have in there. And this is something I hadn't done before and I really wanted to try was doing another letterpress plate on top of a letterpress design. So I inked that up with the black ink. I ran that through the machine and it transferred beautifully. It it looks absolutely stunning. If you haven't fallen in love with the better press system yet, I completely understand. It's another system to worry about. I get that. But it is beautiful results every single time. And I've only touched the surface of what you can do with the better press system. So I am calling that card good. I'll add it to a card base later. I'm going to come in and finish off my other cards. So now this one, I'm going to use the dotted waves debossing plate. This is that background that had ink at the top. So I just trimmed that down into a smaller panel. I used that dotted waves onto some white cardstock. It's very, very subtle, but it is beautiful. It's something to just add to your background so it's not plain white. Now, I have noticed in the past that regular adhesive sometimes doesn't stick well enough when it comes to such a textured background. So what I did is I trimmed down a sheet of this double-sided adhesive from Altenew, and I'm placing that on the back of that debossed uh, cardstock that I did. So I pushed that down really, really well, removed the liner, and now I can add this to my card base. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I have found this works really great when you have those textured backgrounds like that. Now I went ahead and I trimmed down a few other panels of cardstock measuring the same size as my uh, inked cardstock here, my inked panel. I added some of the Altenew adhesive to the back and then I could add this to the front of that panel. Now I'm going to finish this off with a sentiment from the Sincere Sentiments stamp set. This has a lot of great kind of skinnier sentiments, which I love adding to my cards when I want, I don't want to lose that design in the background. So I went ahead off screen, I heat embossed a small sentiment onto black cardstock and white embossing powder. I trimmed that down into a thin strip. And then I'm just layering this up with additional pieces of thin card or cardstock that I trimmed into thin strips and layered together with liquid glue. And then I could just trim this down. So this is a way to build up dimension without going through a ton of foam tape. Then I can add some liquid glue to the back of that. And I like to hold my tweezers so I kind of move it around to figure out where the best placement is. I will set something heavy on it for a minute or so and then it is good to go. And the final card that you'll see in the picture, I did add some embellishments to some of my cards, but this one for having that ink at the top and me going through a couple times, I think turned out pretty well. So here's another card I finished off. This is using the Hammer Mill cardstock and the Versatile Greetings 2 Hot Foil Plate and Coordinating Die. This has that background that I didn't even ink up and it says I use the versatile greetings congrats and added some white pearls. So like I said, it was a really great wedding card idea. And then this is the last card. I think this is my favorite with that pool ink at the bottom and this beautiful sentiment. I really love the words on here. Now here's a look at that last card. I finished up with some gold pearls around the sentiment. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is part of a video hop. So the more comments you leave, the more chances you have at winning. There is more information about that on my blog and also on the Altenew YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out and be sure to stop at the next person in the video hop, which I will have linked down below. 
thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again